Welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I'm glad you're joining us. And welcome back if you're returning. We've been going through our EKG coding reference guide and we're making our way all the way through it. Now, for those of you that don't have access, all you have to do is put this link into your search bar. You'll come, put your email address in, click submit. You'll have to check your email for a link. And at that link, you'll click that and then you'll have access to the coding reference guide here okay and those that are returning do the same thing but you'll bypass that whole email system the first time just to confirm your email so we've gone through part one the general features now we're into the rhythms okay and we've gotten through our sinus rhythms we've gotten through our atrial rhythms. so if you're interested and want to go back through that uh, go ahead and take a look at those but now we are in this part two and we're going to start to look at junctional rhythms okay specifically we're going to look at av junctional bradycardia okay and so let's get started so all you have to do is click this drop down and go down to see uh, some of the things that we're going to be looking at in examples all right let's get started so AV junctional bradycardia, this is a typically a regular narrow QRS complex, less than 120 milliseconds, which is narrow. Okay, QRS complex, they can be wide if there's already underlying aberrancy or a pre-existing intraventricular conduction disturbance. Now, what separates these junctional rhythms, and so let's just take a look at first of all what's going on. So imagine that here's our heart. Okay, this is our right atrium, our left atrium right ventricle and left ventricle okay again we have up here in our uh, right atrium this is our sinus node okay so sa node or sinus node in there we have our internodal pathways that come to an av node we have a bachman bundle to the left atrium you have your his bundle then you have your right bundle branch going to the right ventricle a left bundle branch that goes to it gives off a left anterior and posterior fascicle in the left ventricle okay and what we're talking about here is that normally the heart uh, impulse originates from this sinus node in this case all right and then goes downwards and down to the ventricles but when we have these junctional rhythms specifically this one junctional bradycardia we have it uh, occurring here in this av junctional area all right and this again we said is the av node so remember when we talked about junctional escapes that means there may have been a problem and you had an escape beat that's going on in this case we have a junctional rhythm okay so pretty much the impulses are coming right from this and going downward so they'll go antegrade and you may also have retrograde conduction okay to the atria now what differentiates these different types of av junctional rhythms is the ventricular rate okay so you can see the name dictates the rhythm or the ventricular rate dictates the name of the rhythm excuse me so what we want to say here is that the av junctional bradycardia this one here is when we have a beat of less than 40 beats per minute so why is it that okay well remember there's an intrinsic rate of each area in the heart okay of these pacemaker cells in the sinus node with our adult patients it's between 60 and 100 beats per minute okay with the av node it's between 40 and 60 beats per minute and then down here in the ventricles it's between 20 and 40 beats per minute okay and those are just estimates now so you can see the normal if we say av node the normal intrinsic rate is between 40 and 60 beats per minute okay so anything less than 40 would be a bradycardia okay a slower uh, rhythm okay anything that is between 40 and 60 would be the simply the junctional rhythm okay so just its normal rhythm like sinus rhythm between 60 and 100 in this case this is the navy junctional rhythm if the rate is between 60 and 100 beats per minute we call that an accelerated junctional rhythm okay so an accelerated and then if it's over 100 we call that a tachycardia okay so just like all the other tachycardias above 100 beats per minute 
So hopefully that makes sense, okay? And so when we talk about AV junctional bradycardia, we're saying that we have a rhythm that originates from here in that AV junctional area, and it has this rate, okay? So that's AV less than 40 beats per minute, AV junctional bradycardia. So what you'll see on the EKG is a slow rate, okay? Obviously you don't have those normal P waves preceding it, so if you look down here, notice that you have no P waves before each one of these beats, okay, before these QRS complexes, and they're off, they're quite slow. So if you were to calculate the ventricular rate in this case, what you want to do is, again, from beginning to end is 10 seconds, multiply that by 6 is 60 seconds, which is 1 minute. So what you can do is count the complexes, multiply by 6, and you can get the rate in beats per minute. So if we do that, we have 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, okay? Six times six is 36. So obviously lower than that, and you have a junctional rhythm, those intervals are normal. So from here to here, no, notice these R to R intervals are the same throughout. We call this a regular rhythm, and it's a regular narrow QRS, okay? So you have a narrow QRS, and what we mean by narrow, if you imagine your QRS complex, the width of it from beginning to end should be less than 120 milliseconds, or three of those small boxes, okay? Unless there's already underlying aberrancy or pre-existing interventricular conduction delay, okay? Now, the other thing is the P waves are often absent, so you don't see them, or they may be buried in the QRS complex, okay? If they're present, they may be seen immediately before or after the QRS complex with a superior leftward axis. And why may you see those? Well, imagine you have the conduction Right, starting in this region here, it's going to conduct anterogradely down to the heart, right? And that's why you have the narrow QRS complexes because it's still using the normal conduction pathway, okay? So that's where you get these QRS complexes. And then you're also going to have sometimes this retrograde conduction that may cause an atrial depolarization, and that's why you may see the P wave. But imagine it's all starting here, so they're almost happening simultaneously, and that's why they may be buried within the QRS complex, okay? Now, a regular R to R interval with underlying atrial fibrillation or flutter can be seen with the digitalis toxicity, okay? And that can represent a complete heart block with an accelerated AV junctional or AV junctional tachycardia, okay? So that's an aside thing. But our focus here is this AV junctional bradycardia. So notice where it's starting. Okay, in this region here, so it starts here. Notice that it's based on the rate, in this case, less than 40 beats per minute. Okay, so we went through the rates. We said this is a regular narrow QRS complex, unless there's already underlying aberrant or intraventricular conduction delay. We said that the, again, rate less than 60, 40 beats per minute. And we also said that the P waves may be absent or buried within the QRS complex, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So this is AV junctional bradycardia. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay? So this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay you'll find stuff that's separate so notice that we have a number of topics practice material lectures a way for you to contribute and this is the course here over here so you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so and that's more on youtube there's another hundred more than 100 about 200 videos that are available with the course so those are separate videos and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter okay so completely separate from what you're getting online for free okay these are um, course material that comes with it so notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay, 
and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows, uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who is the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course. You'll see examples of lectures, okay? Why we developed this, okay? A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay? You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay? And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.